Good evening. So good evening and good morning. Welcome to the Friday study circle, where as we know, we are going through the passages of the sunlit path, which has words from the mother and so invoking mother and Sri Aurobindo's grace and presence as we begin this session. Thank you. So we were on the section receptivity and aspirations and uh, we have to do, we last time we did three sources of vital force and this time we have to do activity and passivity in sadhana. So if anybody is willing, if they would like to read it for us, Vadalji is unmuted. Thank you. I read the room. Yeah, I think Badal ji is reading, Anjali ji. Thank okay. you. Okay. Badal ji, okay. you're reading, right? Okay. Uh, I, I'll read. Thank you. Activity and passivity, a passivity in sadhana. An active movement is one in which you throw your force out. That is, when something comes out from you in a movement, a thought, a feeling, something which goes out from you to others, or into the world. Passivity is when you remain just yourself like this, open and receive what comes from outside. It does not at all depend on whether one moves or sits still. It is not that at all. To be active is to throw out the consciousness or force or movement from within outwards. To be passive is to remain immobile and receive what comes from outside. Activity in aspiration, that means that your aspiration goes out from you and rises to the divine. In the tapasya, the discipline you undertake and when there are forces contrary to your sadhana, you reject them. This is movement of activity. Now, if you want to get true inspiration, inner guidance, the guide, and if you want to have the force, to receive the force which will guide you and make you act as when as you should, then you do not move any longer. That is, I don't mean not move physically, but nothing must come out from you anymore and on the contrary, you remain as though you were quite still, but open and wait for the force to enter and then open yourself as wide as possible to take in all that comes into you. And it is this moment, instead of outgoing vibrations, there is a kind of calm, quietude, quietude, but completely open as though you were opening all your force in this way to the force which must descend into you and transform your action and consciousness. Receptivity is the result of a fine passivity. Yes, thank you, Captain. So just taking it up in more details and welcoming any reflections, any comments, anything that you would want to share at any time, we can unmute and share. So Mother says that an active movement is one in which you throw your force out. So when something comes out from you in a movement, a thought, a feeling, 
something which goes out from you to others or into the world. Passivity is when you remain just yourself like this. Open and receive what comes from outside. So we, we all know, you know, we can sense it, feel it, that how specifically in today's day and age, everything is all about activity, right? Movement, what are you doing? What has been done? What are the accomplishments? So activity is when something goes out from me, even a feeling, a thought, not just a movement. You know, they say that if you are thinking of something bad or if say somebody is there, he said something and you feel like giving them a tight slap, for example. So in even though you didn't move and that was just a thought or a feeling, technically the action has already happened. Like you will be paying for that thought it would go in your account. Like I've just heard that. I find that quite interesting. So just sharing. So passivity is when you remain just yourself like that. Just re re You remain just yourself like this. Open and receive what comes from outside. It does not at all depend on whether one moves or sits still. It is not that at all. To be active is to throw out the consciousness or force or movement from within outwards. To be passive is to remain immobile and receive what comes from outside. Activity in aspiration. So that means that your aspiration goes out from you and rises to the divine. In the tapasya, the discipline you undertake and when there are forces contrary to your sadhana, you reject them, reject them. This is a movement of activity. I'll read this again. Activity in aspiration. That means that your aspirations goes out from you and rises to the divine. In the tapasya, the discipline you undertake and when there are forces contrary to your sadhana, you reject them. This is a movement of activity. So from outside it might look that nothing has happened, right? One is just sitting and yet so much seems to be happening inside. So activity in aspiration. Yeah. Very beautiful. So now, if you want to get true inspiration, inner guidance, the guide, and if you want to have the force, to receive the force which will guide you and make you, make you act as you should, then you do not move any longer. That is, I don't mean not move physically, but nothing must come out from you anymore. So, if you want to get true inspiration, inner guidance, the guide. And we all, you know, we are confused, we want things, we don't know whether those are the right things, other things we don't want which we have, we don't know whether we should reject them. So, if we want true inspiration, inner guidance, a guide, and if you want the force to receive the force which will guide you and make you act as you should, then you do not move any longer. And Mother says, I don't mean not move physically, but nothing must come out from you anymore. And on the contrary, you remain as though you were quite still but open and wait for the force to enter. And then open yourself as wide as possible to take in all that comes into you. You know, we know it's 
quite difficult because when something needs to happen, when I feel I need to do this, I need to do that, or there is some confusion, there is a lot of movement in the being, right? So this movement basically prevents the inspiration or the guidance for me to be truly guided. It acts like a block for that because I am not still to receive it. So you remain as though you were quite still, but open and wait for the force to enter and then open yourself as wide as possible to take in all that comes into you. So when uh, Monica used to, you know, encourage us and guide us about about you know placing the attention on top of the head and she had shared some write-up where the mother says it's like you know it's like you're wanting to receive you're just open like the solar panels which are just there where you know they are just opening to receive the solar energy the sunlight so that the energy can be produced so just that openness that i'm open i'm open and i'm still so you wait for the force to enter and then open yourself as wide as possible to take in all that comes into you. And it is this movement, instead of outgoing vibrations, there is a kind of calm quietitude. So these are the vibrations I was referring to, I was feeling even when I was talking. So instead of outgoing vibrations, there is a kind of calm quietitude but completely open as though you were opening all your pores in this way to the force which must descend into you and transform your action and consciousness. So completely open. As though you were opening all your pores in this way to the force which must descend into you and transform your action and consciousness. Receptivity is the result of a fine passivity. So we might, we, you know, at times we take the word passivity to be quite. You know, like as if there's nothing happening, we take it as a negative thing. Yeah, so receptivity is the result of fine passivity. So I think it's more, um, more, this is more of what we can experience. Like if we have experience, if we have been a witness to the movement inside and lost a lot of times we all are so if we want to be guided mother is telling us the way so activity and passivity in sadhana so any reflections on this any sharing of experiences is welcome I think, yeah, receptivity also, uh, you know, I remember very early on, uh, I don't know what question I must have asked, but something would be, and I think we've heard this analogy before, that, you know, your pot is fully, you know, uh, filled with all sorts of junk, what are you going to receive, right? So... That is, I think, quite true for the sadhana also. I mean, you really have to empty out everything. All these preconceived notions we have. You know, and then it comes back to the sense of identity. My is my idea, my thing. You know, I mean, the whole thing just uh, goes on and on. I think Mother also has said this somewhere. You know, that people say, you don't receive your things. You're all shut up. You know, you're closed in your 
ego then what are you going to receive obviously they're all linked together and then i remember i think uh, i think it was won had mentioned this that's quite true this passage we just read you know right there are those symbols he says it so beautifully in the book the mother only two things are necessary only two things an aspiration that calls from below and the grace that also so that is something we always need to remember the aspiration you know and then i was trying this uh, karu to the psychic fire meditation because that is that is what the aspiration is doing you're growing that aspiration by putting all your uh, you know all the defects in that psychic fire so i was remembering that i think aspiration i remember alokta mentioned this and it is definitely he was I personally felt that is so true he said people attach a lot of importance to you know i mean we we have got aspiration and rejection but he says aspiration is far more important and actually that to me now you you see sir shivan the symbol also it's true because rejection i mean to some extent yes you can try but you can never succeed on your own you have to offer it to the mother so how do you offer you aspire you know that again goes back to that psychic uh, fire right so that is i think why i feel it is so important yes thank you thank you vishal ji absolutely the stress on aspiration is very highly you know stressed and then rejection comes later but yeah i mean from beginning to middle to end that aspiration that i you know want want this like as in the oneness the aspiring to basically surrender everything to the divine offer everything to the divine and even in synthesis of yoga this aspect you know it's very beautifully said again and again about that the focus has to be there the aspiration has to be there yeah anybody else on this that all that's coming to me is that coming from say a regular day to day when a lot is happening a lot in me is moving and this seems so opposite of what i would naturally do and yet recognizing that what i naturally do is coming out of so much chaos and leads to so much confusion that it's seems that yes this is something that one must try and in periods and in intervals and in experiences when we have actually been able to be this quiet this you know passivity it is very fulfilling it is very gratifying it's very enlarging and widening so very beautiful passage with practical you know a lot of time we hear things which are like Okay, they sound beautiful, and we feel that yes, that must be good. That must be good, and yet this practical advice from mother that if you have to be active, be active in aspiration, and passivity helps one to be more receptive, and receptivity is where basically where the issue is happening, right? They say all the forces, all the grace is right here. but i am not open to receiving it yeah
So if there is nothing else, maybe we can take a one more sacrifice today. But if there is something, anybody can other if you are welcome to comment or reflect. Yeah, Anjali ji, would you like to read the next yeah. passage? Thank yes. you. Yes. The flame and the vase. You can be at once in the state of aspiration, of willing, which calls down something, exactly the will to open oneself and receive, and the aspiration which calls down the force you want to receive, and at the same time be in that state of complete inner stillness which allows full penetration, for it is in this immobility that one can be penetrated, that one becomes permeable by the force. Well, the two can be simultaneous without the one disturbing the other or can alternate so closely that they can hardly be distinguished. But one can be like that, like a great flame rising in aspiration and at the same time as though this flame formed a vase, a large vase, opening and receiving all that comes down. And the two can go together. And when one succeeds in having the two together, one can have them constantly, whatever one may be doing. Only there may be a slight, very slight displacement of consciousness, almost imperceptible, which becomes aware of the flame first and then of the vase of receptivity, of what seeks to be filled and the flame that rises to call down what must fill the vase, a very slight pendular movement and so close that it gives the impression that one has the two at the same time. Thank you. So the flame and the vase, just going through over to individual lines. Mother says, you can be at once in the state of aspiration, of willing, which calls down something, exactly the will to open oneself and receive, and the aspiration, which calls down the force, you want to receive. So will to open oneself and receive. So there is this will. And then there is this aspiration which calls down the force you want to receive. And at the same time, be in that state of complete inner stillness which allows full penetration for it is in this immobility that one can be penetrated, that one becomes permeable by the force. So will to open oneself and receive and the aspiration which calls down the force you want to receive. And a state of complete inner stillness which allows is to happen. So well, the two can be simultaneous without the one disturbing the other or can alternate so closely that they can hardly be distinguished. But one can be like that, like a great flame rising in aspiration and at the same time as though this flame formed a vase, a large vase, opening and receiving all that comes down. Yeah. 
so as in everything is set right like the one who wants to receive is open the channel of communication the channel of receptivity through that aspiration is open so as in if there is any obstacle anywhere in any of this you know visual or the chain that if the aspiration is strong but the being is not ready you know the what vishal ji was saying the vessel the you know you are full of things there is no place for new to come then that won't lead us far similarly if there is no aspiration just that oh i am open i am open then also so yeah the two have to happen simultaneously so and the two can go together and when one succeeds in having the two together one can have them constantly whatever one may be doing only there might be a slight very slight displacement of consciousness almost imperceptible which becomes aware of the flame first and then of the vast of receptivity so just taking this again only there may be a slight very slight displacement of consciousness almost imperceptible which becomes aware of the flame first and then of the vast of receptivity of what seeks to be filled and the flame that rises to call down what must fill the vast a very slight pendulum movement and so close that it gives the impression that one has the two at the same time yeah very visual very clearly explained and yet it appears that this is something we'll have to experience for ourselves and Yeah. Oh, symbolism is very beautiful in this one. I was, it was. I was thinking it is almost like, and again, I guess maybe you could, like, if you tie it to the symbol, then you know it is first. the aspiration and then the force that answers you know i guess it makes sense so there is my, the way i was understanding it i was saying it's so subtle mother saying they can be almost together but i think she uses the word right ki um, there is a, that you can feel that perceptible difference you know it's like your breath maybe you can think like you know you're breathing in then I'm feeling out. I, I maybe that's not a good analogy, but but the response is to the aspiration, and while that may be, you know, pretty much like right away, I was it was very. Uh, I think the last part you read, Saru, that where she said that it can be there all the time. I mean, that was so. Uh, I just was thinking, wow. I mean, you know, that is. So it's like almost she's saying that it is like a backdrop. Right, I think shouldn't she say that somewhere, and that this can be going on all the time or something like that. Constantly, one can have them constantly, whatever one may be doing. Yeah, see, that is very interesting. It's like almost like a backdrop, which I, I mean, at least probably. you know we can sit and sometimes we have these quiet moments but i think i do often forget you know it's hard um, but i think that is what she's saying that is what we can progress to that is almost always there as a backdrop Yes, very true. 
and it blends. You know, even say whenever we sit, when we have a, I don't know, designated time or not, but when we are sitting, even starting with this visual, right? Like even practicing this more consciously. Because initially everything has to be an effort, has to be a conscious effort. Yeah. You know, it somehow also help, uh, kind of making me feel that, you know, how it, in integral yoga it is said that nothing has to be left behind. So before this, it was like, you know, one has to reject the body and say that, okay, just my understanding or there's a state of nirvana. But when Sri Aurobindo says that nirvana is the starting point for integral yoga, the yoga begins once you have reached nirvana. So nothing can be left behind as in you know that vase feels like you know my physical and the flame feels like you know again my aspiration and more subtle and and so the whole thing the whole being has to be open and ready and all ready to receive. And again and again, you know, this stress on stillness, we keep getting this. Yeah. And that was very beautiful what you just said, that the whole being, you know, and I was just thinking that, uh, you know, we we talk right like we are all multiple parts and we see that maybe some part of the being is more open then right? but others are still closed so that would be very nice that so then i think you know slowly slowly see okay but this part you you know when you start observing i think the other time we were reading about where this is coming from you know vital or mental and you see no maybe this thought or whatever the preconceived mental notion I have or maybe it's this emotion or then even the body right? the body also has certain reactions and fears it's a, it's a very beautiful point you know, since you had mentioned Sri Aurobindo's symbol quite a few times I was just trying to find something which would just Remind us and look at it again. And maybe we can read this. So, aurobindo.org, Sri Aurobindo, his symbol. Yeah, it's very small. So, the descending triangle represents Sat, Chit, Ananda. The ascending triangle represents the aspiring answer from matter under the form of light, light and love. So ascending triangle represents the aspiring answer from matter under the form of light, light and love. And the descending triangle we know represents Sat Chit Anand. The junction of both, the central square, is the perfect manifestation having at its center the avatar of the supreme, so the lotus. The water inside the square represents the multiplicity of the creation. Madam. Jaru, can you find that uh, opening lines from the book, the mother, that, you know, where he writes this aspiration and the uh, grace that I'm, I don't know, what is it, what are the subsequent lines, maybe it's not, uh, 
I was just trying to remember that. I... The book the mother you are saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see if she has it. It is there, Irene? Yes, yes, please. Mm -hmm. There are two powers that alone can effect in their conjunction the great and difficult thing which is the aim of our endeavor, a fixed and unfailing aspiration that calls from below and a supreme grace from above that answers. Mm. But the supreme grace will act only in the conditions of the light and the truth. It will not act in conditions led upon it by the falsehood and the ignorance. For if it were to yield to the demands of the falsehood, it would defeat its own purpose. Should I read it? Yeah, no, I just wanted to see these first two passages. I wanted to see because that is, you know, I was remembering this when we were talking about the first part we did. And uh, I, I, I'm trying to tie it, right? And that is why I was remembering this passage. So the second part where Shivendu says that it will not act, you know. So I think that is the point about, you know, if we have all this muck in us, right, the ignorance, the falsehood, then basically nothing can come. So that is what, at least how I can understand it, but you know, obviously this is put in a slightly different way. But I think this, you know, the emptying emptying of the vessel is so important. You know, that I, you know, you can think of it as purification, you can think of it whatever. But that is very, very important. Yeah, so uh, Shilpa has shared some things. He has put it on the message that the mountain path leads always in two directions, upward and downwards. All depends on what we put behind us. Life is a perpetual choice between truth and falsehood, light and darkness, progress and regression, the ascent towards the heights or a fall into the abyss. It is for each one to choose freely, the mother. So, from the 29th February 1952, selected works of the mother. So, thank you, Shilpa, for sharing. What yes, I Mother. found interesting yeah. was that how in you know in what we were reading before that um, the there is you know there's a there's a focus on how this ascent which is in in a form of aspiration and the descent which form which comes as a form of supreme grace is simultaneous mother talks about it in simultaneous way even in shubindo symbol that it, it's not just one or the other and in my experience i felt is that we are not prepared, not like you know, at least I I can't say we, but I am not prepared at times to have both at the same time. So I would definitely have a strong aspiration. And also, you know, sometimes it's good to sit with us and really think, is this really an aspiration? Because it could be a desire. Most of the time it's actually a desire to really see what and what we were reading that. All aspirations are answered, I feel, in my experience. All. And instantaneously, miraculously it does. You say and it happens. But aspirations, not desires. Because most of the times, that's why Shurman used to say, for grace to act, you know, and the condition. And it, if we read forward, and because I've read it, he also talks about this idea of total and complete surrender. But that can only happen when you have aspiration. Because when you have aspiration, there is no agitation that this should happen and now it should happen. You just aspire with the faith that this 
it is going to happen like there is no even doubt in the mind and i'm no i've seen it because in some of the times that i've experienced it that how she answers immediately so the ascend and descend happens at the same time but we are not capable because sometimes i feel i have strong aspiration and when the answer comes i feel so happy that i really don't i'm not able to catch or live up to it you know i just go into inertia or the three modes of prakriti takes over either i'm in rajas or i am in you know in tamas i'm not really able to hold that descent because the instrument is not ready on the other hand it so happens sometimes as well that the descent and you know you have you i could feel that okay she's answering and i'm getting it i'm so happy and so 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 you know self fulfilled in that kind of a descent that the aspiration goes away so there's this thing okay now it should stop you know this clinging uh, with me i feel that okay for example i remember um i remember i i started learning gita i started starting like to so give you an example i started doing gita and, and i was not able to understand you know of course few things i don't know sanskrit i said mother i want to learn sanskrit i remember and it was because genuinely it was to understand gita and really and mother also has spoken highly of sanskrit and it so happened that i found i found i found you know i found somebody fr- from integral yoga who's teaching sanskrit somehow <laughs> it came and i was so happy but it was very expensive because he was doing i said mother this is i'm so happy you gave it to me but because i was also looking at the now at money not even not thinking that she has answered i better take it i spend money on useless things okay i spent it here but you know i'm complaining again and that i it's very expensive in two months i actually find somebody in ireland who's teaching sanskrit and who's doing free classes and it's real it's happened and and i'm so happy i remember that day i was so happy and you know for a week so relished in that but after four or five classes i couldn't attend it because i had other things to attend and then today i was you know again doing it and i was thinking about it few days ago i said look at that that how the descent even happened she answered i complained that this is not happening she again answered as usual how compassionate she is and then also i couldn't complete it so you know this is just an example that how you know it's really important to understand that the ascent and descent has to happen continuously like you cannot only aspire and not be ready for the descent and if descent happens your aspiration shouldn't go away So now I'm again saying, okay, I'm gonna aspire again, and I'm be ready again. You know, of course, it's a continuous process, but I really like that that it's simultaneous, and how to be prepared for both, not just stop on aspiration, but prepare yourself that if she delivers your aspiration, at least I should be ready. I should not go into inertia. I should not go into you know this thing. So that was interesting when we were reading it, and I was contemplating about the fallacies of human <laughs> human beings and how much. ignorance we are in and how much compassion she has it's just unbelievable yes nandini thank you for sharing you know what nandini is sharing what vishalji was sharing this purity of the vessel and what we were reading right when sri aurobindo was saying that it cannot serve ignorance and falsehoods so you know and i see so much ignorance or falsehood in me in my actions in my thoughts more and more and more is uncovered and light is shown on oh why did i do this or why was i doing this you know our little greed our little expectations our assumptions our images of ourselves and how the world is you know when we talk about work or what to do even this purification in itself you know it takes so much sincerity honesty grace courage that it's amazing and you know how again the cup thing that vishal ji was sharing like you know it's so 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 one sees this that one you know how shri arobind says ki we empty the cup when we realize it's not pure but because the emptiness is so hard to endure say for example you know practically say we are connected to say a family a bunch of people 
who we when we are with them we don't like it we feel that ye baatein ho kya rahi hai na what is happening what are we talking about i don't want to be here or a group of friends but when we disconnect you know it takes courage and will to disconnect but when we disconnect the emptiness the aloneness the loneliness comes to us and we feel ke nahi after some time we feel nahi isse to wahi better tha at least something was happening there was some action that was happening because without this sub this movement this transaction these exchanges some way we feel something is wrong like kuch galat ho raha hai and then we again refill how shri aurobindo says the cup with dirty water mm-hmm. so if we are able to reflect this you know in our everyday life even in savitri you know i'm so surprised so many times the stress on aloneness loneliness is really there i don't know yesterday only i was reading that how you know he was alone and like a splendid sun something like this so again and again in these lines that thing is mentioned if we are able to catch it that it's a lone journey it's a lone journey but इन द सेंस यू नो हाउ इट लाइक हमारे छोटे छोटे ग्रीड्स ही नहीं खत्म होते छोटे के ऑल दो इट्स नॉट दैट इट अपीयर्स दैट यू नो माय एक्सपेक्टेशंस और माय डिजायर्स आर सो लेस नाउ बस थोड़ी सी शांति मिल जाए बस यू नो कोई शोर ना मचाए कुछ खराब ना बोले एंड येट इट्स अदर मैटर हाउ स्मॉल इट इज और ऑफ वॉट लेवल इट इज स्टिल देयर इट इज स्टिल देयर तो इट वी कैन सी दैट with more and more grace and sincerity we can have the courage to face things alone and receive what i can receive rather than just having that image of being full while being completely empty hollow inside is even reminding me of those lines again from savitri where you know it said that obedient to high command she sits for sad to life i don't know there were three words were passing matters life in the sense you know the things that are so important to me that my whole life is revolving around them are passing matters and she's obedient sitting obedient to the high command but i am obedient to my inner commands and till now but it doesn't mean it has to be that way it has to continue that way yeah no alok da in one of his talks a long time back maybe a year back I was listening to something, and he had shared a very beautiful poem that Sri Aurobindo had translated or written. I think from Bengali. I am not sure what. And there was a line I had shared this before. It was very beautiful. In that in that poem, there was this line that "Tumhe malinta nahi suhati, to malinne tajunga, satat poon vidhi nish kalank hokar ma tujhe tumhe bhajunga." So basically, you know, he was talking about it. How say if we are doing the rituals, the pujas, how much stress is there on cleanliness and you know, naha ke karo, ye ne karo, gande hath mat lagao, kha ke hath mat lagao. You know, there's so much we think about, and he was saying all that means nothing if inside it's not clean, right? And then this line that because I know you love purity, and I know you love purity, so I will. reject i will discard i will cleanse myself because i want to be pure for you you know we experience these things we listen to these things and yet we keep losing things right like it comes it sounds beautiful it's like yes 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 and again you know we get lost and like the pendulum movement and all we get distracted there are countless beautiful practices or poems but i don't stick to one i keep going here and there so if only i could stick 
and yeah there will be a time for that too hopefully soon yes any <laughs> reflections before we end today I, yeah i think um, yeah that those points that nandri said were very very beautiful but yeah you know one has to keep trying i think that obviously is not a journey journey of you know it takes a long time i also find this one thing to add that you know this is a, a little bit you can make it a game you know that is i think where i think we have i, I don't know if we posted here or i sometimes get confused uh, you know this joy of progress right because obviously it's not going to happen i think there's a letter from dilip also to sherbin to and he says what again are fallen you know again are and you know what is there just you know pick up your boots and you know start again i mean you cannot despair and so but yes i mean so i think it's a little bit that you know mother talks about self mastery so i feel that is you realize okay you know ho gaya fir se matlab it came when when whatever some maybe it is you know something that you thought maybe it was better but you still you know maybe you got angry you got annoyed or whatever right i mean and i think that to your point i was so that one passage that you know where he says in moments i think we have quoted this many times when the inner lamps are lit and the lights cherished guests guests are left outside our spirit sits alone and speaks to its gulfs this is one very uh, you know and i think it's really relevant and then it goes on a wider consciousness opens then its doors invading from the spiritual silences a ray of the timeless glory stoops a while to commune with our seized illumined clay and leaves its huge white stamp upon our lives thank you for sharing it's always a good reminder so today we have done two passages if we want to go back and you know visit them it would be good for us activity and passivity in sadhana followed by the flame and the war and next week or whenever we meet next we will be looking at aspiration and receptivity i think it would further throw light on what we have read today so we will end the session here so thank you so much for joining in for sharing for reflecting and thanking grace thanking divine for this session for these words of guidance from the mother that would help us live right thank you everybody thank you thank you